So as this storm approaches landfall, let's track exactly where it is. Uh, CNN's uh, meteorologist Ellison Chinchar is with me right now. So uh, give us an idea of how this thing is tracking. Yeah, because we just got the brand new update at the top of the hour. It is now Hurricane Barry. Winds are sustained at 75 miles per hour, gusting to 90 miles per hour. It's still moving incredibly slow, however, to the northwest at only six miles per hour. That has been the key all along because the slower the storm is, the longer it has to dump a tremendous amount of rain over this area. The hurricane hunters have been out. That's where we've been getting a lot of the recon from this storm, giving us that minute by minute data on this particular storm. That in part is what caused the Hurricane Center to upgrade this to a Category 1 storm. The track, it is still expected to make landfall just within the next few hours from now in the state of Louisiana. And from there, it will start to deteriorate and weaken, but it also means that it's going to continue to drop a tremendous amount of rain into other states. So Louisiana is not going to be the only state impacted. Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, Arkansas, all expecting to get a tremendous amount of rain. We're starting to see some of those really heavy rain bands push into Mississippi and Alabama right now. The bulk of the rain, however, is still well to the south, and it's going to be quite a while before we really start to see the majority of the heavy rainfall really arrive into a lot of these locations. Widespread amounts of 5 to 10 inches, but there are going to be some areas that pick up well over a foot of rain before this is finally pushed out, and they're not just by the coast. Keep in mind that pink color, which is the area we talked about above a foot. Some of that even creeps as far north into the state of Tennessee. So this is expected to be a widespread problem. In addition to that, most of the convection with Hurricane Barry, meaning the thunderstorms, are also on the southern edge. So we have really yet to see the bulk of potential tornadoes, damaging winds, and even some hail out of these storms as well. That likely the majority of those storms will push in for the afternoon and even into the evening hours tonight. The flood threat is still going to be significant, obviously along the coast for the obvious reasons, but notice all this moisture. Once we start moving this forward and the storm itself comes inland, that moisture then moves to the Midwest, then it moves to the Northeast. So this is really going to be a big impactful storm for other places other than just along the Gulf. Where the Gulf is concerned, especially the Gulf Coast states, it's a lot of the rivers. Yes, the rainfall comes down. You obviously have a flooding concern there, Fred. But one of the other things, you know, Baton Rouge, for example, they have three big rivers that run in or around that city. All three of them are expected to get to major flood stage with this storm. One of them is expected to break its all time record high crest on Tuesday. Yes, you heard me correctly. Tuesday. That's because for a lot of these storms, it's a delayed effect, and that's going to be one of the other concerns. The short term impact, it's going to be the storm surge as well as the heavy rainfall that comes down. But Fred, the river flooding, unfortunately, is going to be a problem that may linger for weeks.